100 million tons. Of this amount, almost 3 million tons was for direct consumption and the rest was for industry. Unfortunately, this high demand for sugar could not be fulfilled domestically. Although sugar production is historically noted as a part of the oldest and most important plantation in Indonesia. In the schooling era, in the 1930s, there were 179 super mills operating with 14.8% land productivity and between 11 and 13.8% sugar yield. However, these percentages keep declining from year to year. This simply is due to land conversion, declining sugar prices, and degrading soil quality. Consistent decline in sugar production, accompanied by relatively low sale price of sugar cane from farmers to mills, has made local sugar industries stop operating. This has discouraged farmers to plant sugar cane so their welfare has steadily declined. The slowering life quality of farmers must certainly be reduced and stopped. Based on the observation in the field, there are several things that can be attempted. Firstly, the sugar cane waste can be turned into compost. The waste of sugar cane production called filter cake was left untreated by sugar companies in Madiun. One research conducted by Purnama et al. in 2012 showed that such waste can be converted into compost. This compost can increase the growth and production of sugar cane. Using compost as fertilizer in sugar cane area will significantly reduce the cost of production. Converting the waste into compost also reduces environmental pollution since living waste untreated has created terrible smell and damaged the life in the river. Secondly, sugar cane farmers can be empowered to improve their own welfare. Sugar cane farmers in this area have plenty of idle time about eight months when they wait for the harvest. They can actually use this to process filter cake into compost and even market this fertilizer to other farmers. Attempts to convert sugarcane wheels into organic fertilizer or compost can be done in group under a business unit. This group effort can boost the production volume while reducing the production cost at the same time. The business unit suitable for these farmers is a cooperative. Cooperative is unique due to its dual dimension, economic, and social. Through a cooperative, farmers can improve their welfare through a business unit while strengthening social bonding among members of cooperatives. Most of the existing cooperatives have gone beyond the initial principle of cooperative itself. Thus, it is important to have a cooperative entrepreneur who will ensure that the cooperative will be beneficial for farmers as members of the cooperative. The concept of cooperative entrepreneur, which is relatively new, refers to someone who can see opportunity to form cooperative and initiate to establish a cooperative that can generate benefits for its members. The presence of a cooperative entrepreneur can be a motor in generating income and increasing the welfare of the members, in this case, farmers of sugarcane. This cooperative entrepreneur acts as an initiator to organize farmers and encourage them to join a business unit, namely cooperative. The main activities of the cooperative include the processing of sugarcane waste into compost. The processing is standardized, so the product in the form of compost pays the standard for export. Thus, farmers can use their own compost product with the best quality. Although the Indonesian government has neglected the existence of cooperative, the presence of cooperative entrepreneur will establish a stronger, independent cooperative that will improve the welfare of farmers, especially sugarcane farmers. I am Gita Domayanti from Diploma Programs of Bogor Agricultural University.